Director of Photography Jeff Burton held a masterclass in location lighting for cinematography students from the Australian Film, Television and Radio School. Jeff's experience in cinematography spans some 28 years. In this time he has shot documentaries, commercials and now concentrates on feature films and miniseries, having shot over 25 features in Australia and overseas since 1974. Okay, stand by Valera and Philip, action. The aim of the workshop was to reproduce the experience of shooting on location. This involved confronting natural and physical elements, such as changing weather and working in small spaces such as a kitchen or a doorway. Hello. Hello. How are you? In this workshop, Jeff also stressed the importance of a working relationship with the gaffer, in this case Ian Plummer, who has been Jeff's gaffer for many years. The main location was a suburban house in Sydney and over the next two days the crew would be shooting in several different areas of the house. The first setup had the actor walking from the exterior street up to a dark doorway. As the first day's shoot was overcast with occasional showers, the natural light changed considerably. So in some, in some senses uh, the nature of, of uh, realistic shooting and being locked into short schedules and the fact that no matter what the light is on the day you're going to shoot with that light can seem very restrictive but by the same token you can turn it to your advantage as a cinematographer. One thing that you've got to look for is you've got the actor coming in the foreground here so you, you don't want to burn him up. You've got to light that area without overexposing this area. So we could either come out there with say a 12 by 12 Griflon mm. and a couple of sixes or a 12 off it or something like that so we've got a a big soft source right across, mm. so it's even all the way through. Right. When, he, when he says a 12 by 12 Grifflon, um, what that is for those of you who, 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 don't, who don't know is a, a large reflector measuring uh, four metres by four metres. So we're going to go that way with it. We're going to bounce from over there and try and cover the doorway and the wall. See how we go. My purpose is to try and reproduce uh, the situation you find in Australian feature shooting. And uh, what that involves is, is a truckload of equipment that is yours as a cinematographer for the duration of the shoot. It means that you come to a totally new location like this, but you always know what resources you have. And this includes the, the idea or the concept of a gaffer uh, who comes with a truckload of equipment. And, and that's also part of this exercise. We're, we're working with the resources that we have in the truck, and that's it, you know. And, and uh, as an example of the most typical way of shooting in this country. So as he arrives in that port, he starts back. Okay, and action. The main problem with lighting the first setup was balancing the exterior daylight with the darkness of the narrow doorway. Because the camera ended up shooting straight onto the doorway, there weren't many options left for where to set the lights. The actors blocked through the scene several times before any lights were set. I mean, would it be possible to just get a small light and uh, shoot it down? The problem with lighting from under here, this is a suggestion, is that it is not going to look quite as naturalistic as it does now because it, it will have uh, uh, a slight direction to it which we're not establishing any, in any sort of way. I would be predicting, I think, that we will probably also do a slight exposure change on this shot. That I would, I would assume a little iris pull perhaps as she goes under here just to uh, get a little bit more detail. But the point I was making before about uh, this amount of wall still being in the end shot means that you can't go completely over the top with an exposure pull because this will brighten unnaturally. So it's a matter of just doing a, a little tweak that will help give us a bit more detail. The first lighting setup was simple. Enhancing the natural daylight a 12K HMI was bounced off a 12 by 12 Grifflon, providing a soft daylight source. Inside, a cinepar was used for the background to suggest daylight coming from another room. And a 150 watt photo crescenta bulb was used as a practical light source in shot. 
A quarter of blue gel was used on the photo crescendo to slightly balance it to daylight. I think basically that uh, the door exchange works, but the exposure variation we did bringing him from outside to the door is pretty well imperceptible. Uh, what is interesting, if you remember the degree of underexposure we were using on the on the front light on the two faces when we went into the close-ups, which was about a, a stop down on both. Uh, obviously, there's plenty of detail there, and I think it's uh, it's fairly believable. Okay, thanks. We'll check the gate and move on to the next shot. Oh, a little. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, it's quite nice to be sort of looking down. And, uh, down and but you stay with the quarter blue. You wouldn't. You wouldn't say go for like a half blue to just make it not so warm. Or? No, no. I'm, I think um, one of the exciting qualities of the new uh, of these EXR stocks yeah. is that there is an amazing latitude in terms of colour tolerance. And quiet, please. And roll camera up. Rolling. And Sid. action. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine. What do you want? Well, I want to talk for one thing. I'm here. I can't get any further, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. First positions, thanks very much. We're going for another rehearsal. And action. But I was quite pleased uh, with the colour balance, with the variation there. I thought the uh, the quarter blueing of that light compared with the uh, extremely cold outside light actually worked quite well. Thank you very much. The next set was the lounge room, a small white-walled room. Natural daylight was coming through two areas, the window looking onto the street and a doorway leading onto a veranda and the backyard. As before, the actors blocked the scene first to allow Jeff and the students to work out the lighting. So, for the sake of this block through, if we could either all get out in the veranda or into this hallway here, just to give our two actors a chance, a space to move around in. And uh, we'll see how it develops. So, talk. Um, I, uh, I need some help. I can't do this by myself. Just come and sit down, please. Um, and cut. Come and Somehow I get the feeling that when we do aim the, the HMI through here onto the couch, then when we do fill a bit of daylight this way, that it would still be nice somehow, somewhere to have a bit of tungsten in here too. I mean, I keep I looked around to send Jeff for a practical to, to whack in the corner or something, just to see some kind of warmth on him or her. I would worry about mixing another light in here in that we're going to make it look softer right. and maybe a little romantic and in fact the brief for our film is to do a fairly gritty uh, naturalistic uh, uh, piece in times when we weren't so well equipped as we are today and uh, you, you would find that you were really trying to stage things near windows as one does in, in documentary because that's the best looking light and, and there's no convenient way to reproduce that. A documentary gives you a, a good appreciation of natural lighting in, in the sense of where it comes from and, and how it looks and, and, uh, and how people look lit by it. And then in a realistic production one you draws on that experience perhaps to even subconsciously to reproduce it with the added resources that you have. I would be surprised if um, we're not going to get enough interesting light just coming through that one source in the window which will cover all this action in here because the background, uh, I mean it doesn't matter how little light you use in here, you'll never get a dark background. It'll always be, be fairly high key which is one of the features of working in a small uh, white walled room. The next lighting setup used four lights. The 6K HMI was directed through a sheet of heavy spun providing the main source. The cine par was used through a window to suggest daylight in the background. 
Another 4x4 frame of trace was put against the window to soften the effect. Two redheads were used inside to lift the presence of the light from the tungsten practical. This one is going to be a little backlight back onto her when she's standing at the edge of the couch. Results coming from that crack as well. Both the redheads inside used quarter blue gels to match the previous colour balance. So we'll see how that works when they yeah. come through. Yeah, you'd have to be right back behind that, you know, because he's playing it right to the edge. Yeah, that's 284, thanks, on the 9-3. And action. But I, I, I'm sorry, I, oh, Jesus. What do you want me to say, you know? What, what? I'm standing by, David, by, yeah. and action. A problem for me, which I hadn't picked up during shooting, I mean, every Russia screen to me brings revelations, but the uh, uh, Valeris close-up, uh, when she's sitting on the edges of the lounge, um, there's a slight, there's a shadow change on her face, which is, uh, gives the impression of being a double shadow. Well, it is, in fact, a double shadow. It's interesting because in that case, the explanation for that in that case is that, is that, that window, which was about... Um, a metre and a half square, was bisected by an upright post. And even though, and the post was about, uh, about so wide, I guess. But even though we were using an incredibly soft light through silk, the fact that it was, that soft light was, was divided by that was enough to create that, that penumbra, that second lighter shadow, which you can, uh, you can pick up quite clearly on the side of her nose. I had too many things with the 25. 25, the, the frame is too. A reverse angle was the next setup, and this meant shooting against an open doorway. The 6K HMI through the window was used as the same source, and a cinepar was used as a backlight. A piece of shower curtain was used in front of the light to diffuse its direction. Rather than compromise the shot, Jeff adjusted the blind to reduce the direct flare coming from the sky that was in shot. It's very high-tech light control medium. Now we're still getting a tiny flare off that hot sky, but uh, it's fairly well hidden. I don't think it's going to be a problem for it's us. in his chest now? Yeah. No, it's up on his arm, but uh, it probably won't photograph it. So. Uh, what emotion are we on at the moment? It's four eight. OK. It's a quarter of a stop open, two eight, thanks. You see, I, I find that um, that acceptable because, because the, bright, yeah, right. the brightness in the frame is actually below half, halfway down. Mm -hmm. right? The hottest section in the frame is that area of sky, yeah. which is just above the roof of the garage there. And that's under yeah, that's the, the half water, frame. The so in fact, I mean, the, the natural kicker is lower. The third set was in the kitchen, an even smaller location than the lounge room. The only natural light was coming through the window looking onto the yard. Right, what, uh, what we're suggesting now is that uh, uh, some time has passed since uh, uh, the little altercation we, we saw in the lounge room. Uh, it, is still, it is still day, but uh, much later. In terms of lighting, what I think we could suggest in these two rooms and in this sequence is that there's still that evening sunny outside so we can give the light, afford to give the light a bit of direction through windows mm -hmm. and we can warm it up considerably. Do you want to come out to the kitchen? <laughs> We're all going to fit in the kitchen. Um, do you want to just go over there so... All right. Um, come on down this end and... Um, if we put her around about where she is now. It was a tight squeeze in the kitchen, and this presented the problem of where to put the lights. 
Jeff wanted to shine light directly through the window, but found the space in the backyard awkward to work around. Eventually, they decided on a cine par close to the window. An 85 gel was used to suggest the afternoon light. Probably a good space to work in, because I don't think it's... It's just because we're being forced to be closer mm -hmm. with, a, with a smaller lamp rather than further back with a bright lamp, which would be my choice here, mm -hmm. it means that the exposure variation yeah. between here and there is quite extreme. Somewhere here. Flag on to it. Well, do you want to look after that, Lani? Quite a big, uh, big cutter in here. A 4x4 four four frame of trace was used to diffuse the light coming through the window. No fill light was used. Can you put that in a feather situation so we're still getting through onto the bricks? Yeah. Maybe a little bit under that, just to make it. Uh... I can supervise that one too. And go for it. Yeah. Okay, and action. The next day, the first set was in the dining room. Natural light was coming from the windows looking onto the street, but unlike the first day's shoot, it was a bright, sunny day outside, and this presented a new set of problems. This is a perfect example of what happens when you come back to continue a scene. And it's uh, not only a different time of day, but streaming sunshine through the window and uh, absolutely nothing like uh, the situation we left on the first part of the scene. Now in this case, we've already committed ourselves to a look for the scene. We've already shot the first part of it. Uh, we need to maintain the continuity for the next part of the scene so that the, the drama is believable, that she leaves that part of the house and moves to this part of the house and, and the, the feeling is that it's continuous time. Now, if we face him this way so that the only bit of light that's hitting him is through this window and we've got absolutely nothing on his face, we manage to keep light in this background minimal so that unlike the lounge room where we were using those white walls in order to get an outline of his face against it without fill, um, we try and keep this side of his face dark. That would then give us an excuse for when she comes in with a, with a coffee to be aware of the fact that she can hardly see any detail on his face, so we'd turn on a light. Okay? So this helps me uh, with the drama of the scene to suggest that it's getting later. Now what we're going to work out, the difficult thing we're going to work out, we're going to have a practical head. We, have, we, want, a, we want a tungsten light source as though it's coming from that practical. We've got to work out what we're going to put there and how we're going to keep it out of shot. At this stage we've gone through, I would, as a gaffer, I would be expecting the DOP or the operator or whoever to have a basic shot lined up through a chewy. Mm. And then you could say, what's your top of frame? Mm. I mean, so as a DOP, it's not up to you to know how to rig the lamp. It's just sort of, basically, you should be able to tell the gaffer, that's where you want the lamp, and that's going to be out of shot. And it's up to the gaffer to work out how he's going to get it there. No, just as far as to the cheat, maybe for here, I'll max it more. OK, so... A little more, a little more um, So she would turn the light on from the side? Mm. It seems to me there's a lot of concern about restructuring a whole scene because of a very simple lighting problem. Okay. Um, well, we're holding up, yeah. we're holding back your obvious solution yeah. until we discuss all the other possibilities. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, what I suggest we do is just put a pole cut across here and rig a redhead or something. Yeah. It's just so it's yeah. above frame. It's still coming from this practical yeah. in all intents and purposes. It's still backlighting them. It's and it's solved all your problems. To suggest the late afternoon light. 85 gel was put on both the kitchen and dining room windows, so the natural daylight in shot would be warmer. A cine par was shone through this to give the background light in the kitchen some direction.
Another cinepar directed light through the dining room window to where the actors were sitting. Half 85 gel was used to keep the source warmer than the daylight coming naturally into the room. A large black was erected on C stands to block the direct sunlight that was going through the window. A photo crescenta was put in the practical lamp. As the lamp was in shot, the bulb was sprayed down on one side to reduce its intensity. A 12 foot pole cat was used to mount a redhead above the lamp. Straw coloured gel and shower curtain diffusion were used to match the light coming from the lamp. It's, it's really important uh, through all this process of lighting is to do it to a rehearsal, you know, do it to what the actors are doing all the time and, and to construct your position of the keys and level of your keys dependent on what they're doing. Yeah. Okay, and action. quite a nice little mood here, that uh, lighting mood, that I think if we filled from this side, um, we'd risk losing. The risk with fill lighting of any sort is, is that it's, it's generally uh, overall, it's very hard to fill like just that corner of his face, mm. unless you use a hard light, which is going to then give you a whole other set of, a whole other set of shadows and a set of problems. But to, to, to use an overall soft light to fill that, I think we risk uh, um, losing mood. What I would suggest is that the exposure we should be aiming for to shoot is this one that's on him. It becomes the standard as opposed to the one that was on her yesterday which became the standard. And then from, from then on the rest of the frame or the rest of the shot drops down as opposed to that shot yesterday where, where a more day type scene we're allowing stuff to burn out more whereas in this lower light later day scene we should be looking more towards the other end of the exposure range. We're letting things drop off more than, than actually build up. So you get the feeling that, that uh, which isn't true, but you get the feeling that if he moved closer to the window, it wouldn't in fact make much difference to the brightness of it. Andrew Lynn. Go speed. Action. Almost any, uh, any scene, I mean almost any situation with actors, I think is much more convincing for them on location than in a studio. Uh, love scenes, for instance, uh, you know, two, two actors in a, in a bed or, or in a lovemaking situation and, and you're talking about fairly intimate shots and, and surrounding them is a 100 by 100 studio and acres of darkness and, and 50 or 60 people in gantries and towers and, and, and um, you know, it, it's a totally, it must be a totally different experience to them to, to actually being in a bedroom or, or a, a small house or, you know. The new location was quite a contrast as it was a modern house with many open areas but shaded from most of the direct sunlight. What I would emphasise all the time in lighting a situation like this is trying to make as much use as possible of what is here and what it's doing. The whole exercise is not lighting. And if we can uh, approach it from that minim minimalist uh, attitude, I think we can probably make it work. As the camera setup was to be one long tracking shot covering all the action, there was little space where lights could be safely hidden. The main challenge was how to light the broad space the camera was seeing from the areas that were out of shot. We would bounce off, uh, we'd, we would arrange a Griflon reflector out there. Uh, rather than going through a frame like we did yesterday, but uh, maybe suspended off the uh, goller and, and weighted down, working right to the edges of frame. So it's important for him to liaise with uh, the camera operator in that sense. And then we'd run two six lights on it. Two, two 6K HMIs, which would give us a spread to cover this. This is a sort of uh, situation where you're looking through a door into a room where it's uh, an exploration of a house. I mean, it, uh, I mean, you can be really quite liberal with what you do with these situations. I mean, provided the imagery is nice, it really doesn't matter if you're, if you're down on detail and, or the two people end up being silhouettes against a white wall. I mean, you can be really flexible with what you accept in that case. 
as a safe rule, if you know the weather's going to be changing, I mean, by by making um, sunlight through through the HMIs, does that give you good protection over over changing weather? I mean, my argument against that basic philosophy is that you ultimately you're going to end up with a very homogenous product. You know, you can you can end up with uh, the average. Um, um, PG rated American feature where no matter what's happening to the weather everybody is fully lit and nicely exposed and every house looks exactly the same as every other house. Uh, that's the risk of taking that first approach where you say I'm going to control the location and make it do what I want it to do. If you take the other approach where you let the location have its own power I think you end up with more interesting images. To light the scene the 12x12 12 12 Griflon was hung from the pergola outside. Two 6K HMIs were bounced off this to provide a soft, even daylight source. In the kitchen, a cinepar was bounced off the white ceiling to provide a general ambience. Okay, we're running out of time, guys. So let's uh, yeah. on. Yeah, let's on. Mm. Just to try this. Yeah, yeah an action, please. I think the second, the second scene uh, suffered quite a lot by us having such a slow work up to actually shooting it. So by the, by the time we did start shooting that scene, we'd lost a lot of that nice ambience that we had outside when we first arrived. Um, but yet that's another example of uh, uh, characteristic of shooting on location. Uh, these days with, uh, uh, with HMI lighting and, and more compact lighting units and lighter, smaller cameras have enabled us to get into smaller, more compact locations. Um, uh, dollies have become wonderfully freer than they ever were. Uh, and a lot of that, a lot of that type of, of reduced size and more efficient technology has also uh, thrown much more emphasis on location once again, that we were able to use locations more convincingly. Uh, than ever before because things are reducing in size. Most pictures that we shoot in Australia are location based and it seems to me that if one is going to uh, exercise students in uh, uh, the type of lighting as cinematographers they'll be expected to do in, in future employment then one has to consider that most of that work is going to be done on location. And although a lot of very uh, basic lighting principles can be, be taught and exercised in a studio, um, I don't believe it is as relevant to a working cinematographer as knowing how to, how to uh, light on location.